Welcome back to The Contrarian Trader. This is Robert Desmond. It is Sunday, December the 27th, 2009. Folks, um, I hope everybody had a great, great uh, Christmas and Hanukkah. And um, I look forward to uh, spending this uh, this new year with you. Um, folks, last week, let's get straight to the markets. Uh, last week, in my last commentary, I mentioned that the markets had set the financials up for a rally and that we were going to look for that rally coming into the year end. Last week alone, on very, very light volume, we saw a rally in the financials of over 2%. Now, <clears throat> what's critical is to take a look at the volume. Yes, it was an abbreviated trading week um, and uh, most traders were off, but Keep in mind that 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 volume was we moved two percent on the financials, but the volume was non-existent. I mean, the markets may not have they they may not have well been open. I mean, it was all computerized trading. So really, don't get bullish. You know, understand this rally for what it is. It's just keeping the markets in check, keeping the bull sentiment alive as we go into the first of the year. As soon as the first of the year occurs, you you might see a continuation. The probability is we might not, and here's why. Let's take a look at the SPX, the S&P 500. They rallied it last week. Through resistance for a total of, again, over 2%. Yet here we are with volume that's completely dropping off a cliff. Yes, abbreviated trading week, acknowledged, but still. We're breaking through res resistance levels on light volume. What's going to happen when we hit new resistance as we approach the new year? You know, how, how much selling can this market take before it really breaks? Because there really are no, 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 no real buyers here. So where, who's going to be there to support the market when the sellers really come in in earnest and start dumping, start, start dumping stocks? So, you know, please be very, very careful here. Uh, the U.S. dollar, well, first of all, let's take a look at the uh, new resistance levels on the SPX. Uh, here, we're, in, we're still in that uptrend channel. We're going to probably hit the uh, 1130 mark, 1135 mark on the S&P 500 before we hit that the upper band of that uptrend line. Then we might see some selling come in at that point. Uh, the U.S. dollar, the U.S. dollar has corrected these past couple of days. Uh, look at this very, very bullish key reversal on uh, the last trading day. So expect to see some possible continuation sideways on the U.S. dollar, if not a rally higher. Uh, we're, we're going into this trading week. It's going to be abbreviated trading week, as was last week. Expect light volume. Expect continued game playing. But there is news that's set to be announced coming this week. And the, the, there are, the, the market is going to be expecting, the bond market is expecting a treasury auction of $118 billion. That's not a record amount, but it's a record tying amount of $118 billion of new debt that the federal government is looking to tack on. Now, the two-year and the five-year notes, the, the, the short end of that yield curve, the, that, those, those sales should go pretty smoothly. But it's the seven-year notes. Be careful. That it's getting harder and harder for the federal government to sell bonds at these rates at the long end of that yield curve as you go past that seven-year mark, so watch out for that seven-year mark, uh, that seven-year uh, uh, sale, because if it, if it, if the, if the, if the federal government has to start bidding up rates on these, on these, uh, on these sales, you're going to see a, 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 a calamity in this country when it comes down to interest rates. So far, home sales have been we had record home sales last week, and that's been fueled by low interest rates, and the prices of homes dropping. Building permits haven't spiked up, so that, that, that it's not truly a leading indicator of that the, the market is, or the stock market, our economy is in a recovery. No. All it's saying is that the, the, the affordability, the ability of the American consumer to buy a house, it's, it's, a, it's pretty good right now. So if you have interest rates that spike up, then you have a problem out there in the, in, the, in the housing market and then you can see that second leg down because there's going to be more pressure on uh, on, on home uh, values because if, if rates go higher 
and people can't qualify for mortgages, that's going to put pressure on the value of home. So, and and that and, the, and this debt cycle that we that we find ourselves in now, it continues. So it's critical that we find a stable flooring in house prices and a stable uh, uh, interest rate environment. But unfortunately, we're not seeing that right now. And as a matter of fact, if you take a look at the the, the, the you want to see what a real real bull market looks like right now. Take a look at the rally in the ten year yield. I, I mentioned this months ago that this is unsustainable, these yields on the um, on the 10 year note. And sure enough, we've had a heck of a rally uh, over, the, over the course of 2009. And we had this beautiful pullback consolidation and we're looking at a breakout on the 10 year yield. And you can expect to see 4% 4, 4, uh, now it's at that point, you know, we've got to keep in mind over the, over the past year, the Chinese and all treasury holders, those people that are holding our debt, those institutions, people, countries that are holding our debt, have taken a 3% loss on the value of those notes. They're going to demand higher yields. So as we hit this 4% mark, we've always backed off of this 4% mark, uh, going back to 2007. So as we hit that 4% mark, you're going to see some pressure come down on, the, on these bond yields. If it does break out higher, Man, brother, look out below because we're we're gonna we're in a, we're in a new uptrend in the treasury yield. So that's the amount of money the government has to pay out on interest, and it's huge. It's absolutely huge. You know, I can't say how much government spending is, has taken the place of the consumer over the past several years. And just to point out, back in 2006, the Banks issued over $430 billion worth of home equity line of credit loans in the first nine months of 2009. That number is $40 billion. From two, that, that's an insane, that's an insane number. It, from 2002 to 2006, all economic activity, it was 2.8%. Two, 2 that those HELOCs represented. 2.8% of all economic activity came from HELOCs. It's been replaced with government spending, cash for clunkers, et cetera, et cetera. So as that continues, you'll see this false recovery in, in the economy continue. But at some point, it's, it's going to have to stop because we can't afford these interest payments. And we're, what we're looking at going into 2010 you have this new health care bill that's come, coming out. That's going to put a, a real hurting on the, on the states who are already going bankrupt. So expect pressure from the states to have fees go up on the taxpayer. Uh, uh, taxes are going up across the board. And people aren't going to see the benefits of the so-called uh, health care reform for years. But pay, t taxes will be going up soon. You're going to have the Bush tax cuts expiring at the beginning of uh, 2010. Uh, the, the, the banks, I just mentioned the HELOCs, they're, they're clamping down, cutting down those, those HELOC uh, loans. And for those who have uh, those uh, uh, HELOCs open, they're seeing as the, the lines of credit come down or the values of home comes down, so they, they, the banks are tightening up those, uh, those lines of credit. They're, they're cutting them. So, so much for a recovery in, from the consumer because their credit card uh, uh, lines have been cut, HELOCs are being cut, so I don't see what's going to take, that, take the place of the consumer anytime soon. They're broke, okay? Let's take a look at the, at the retail holders. I've mentioned this quite a bit lately, okay? Retail holders, this is an absolute nightmare. The, this, this sector is ready to break. It's ready to ba break strongly. We are up against severe resistance here. There are a lot of sellers. This is a weekly chart. This goes back to 2007 through 2008. There's a lot of resistance in this area, and you're seeing, look at this volume. There, are, there is no up volume on the retail holders. This is a sector that is rolling over. Uh, it's, it's ripe for correction. So please be careful. If there's one sector that you must stay out of going into 2010, it's the retailer. Uh, it's time to get out. The other is, I'm short of the uh, U.S. Steel. I'm down on this trade. I freely admit it, but I plan on adding more. Take a look at this. 
This is a, this is a sector that's running a break as well. This overlaying chart here is the Baltic Dry Sea Index. Traditionally, this is a sector that they've traded in tandem. There's a divergence. Okay, U.S. Steel is going up, but the Baltic Dry Sea Index, which is a measure of goods and services that is that are being traded globally, is declining. Okay, here's the here's the here's the chart of it right here. Right? You, you've got to pay attention to these these sectors because these divergences, because it's telling you a story. They, this is a false market, so please be careful. Take advantage of a 14-day free, free trial offer. Join a contrarian trader and uh, stay tuned, folks. Okay. Happy New Year to everybody. Bye-bye.